<laughs> if the game starts off with an explosion, you know it's going to be good. We haven't even started the game yet. Not even seen the title screen. Anyway, Lucas Arts, rest in peace. You were an awesome company. A shame that they had to close it down. A moment of silence. Back in December 1998, Lucas Arts teamed up with Factor 5 to bring us an amazingly well-selling video game. It actually sold better than I had expected it to. In fact, I found out uh, just today, an hour ago, how well it sold. Today's game is Star Wars Rogue Squadron for the N64. There's also a PC version, but from what I understand, we don't talk about that. Actually, as I was saying, this game sold better than I had even expected it to. It uh, released in December 1998, man I feel old, and it was the second highest selling video game for the first half of the month. The game that was above that, and it's going to a demo, <laughs> the game that was, that actually sold above it. Good morning. Yeah, I'm going to skip this, and I'm going to get into the menu here so that we can skip all the other demos. Am I, as I'm trying to say here, let me try again. The only game that sold better than Star Wars Rogue Squadron in December of 1998 for the first half, the only game to sell better, was Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It released the same month as Ocarina of Time, and this was the only game, this, this is the second best selling video game of that month for the first half. I mean, yeah, for the first half and the second half, Obviously, Zelda did better, but really, it seems to be kind of a lost game somewhere. I don't know how. And uh, actually, in the UK, it sold ahead of Ocarina of Time. It was in second place still then, too, but still, ahead of Ocarina of Time? You don't say this kind of stuff lightly. Trust me, I don't believe it myself. I really don't. But uh, I guess it's a true fact. Ocarina of Time didn't sell as well as this game in the UK. And uh, one more thing before we jump into this game. The media sources who are going to review this game, they were not sent spare copies because demand was so high. Sales expectations for this game were actually 100% better than what they had anticipated. There were so few copies of this game, they were rushing real hard to put all these out put out enough copies for everybody to buy them, they couldn't send spare copies to the media for a review. The people who wanted to review it, they had to go out and search for a game themselves. Which, to my knowledge, doesn't happen. I don't know if that happens very often, but to my knowledge, not very often! So this is a very rarely well-known game for as good as it is. I figured I grew up with this game, and it was during my playing of this game that I found out I was a major Star Wars fan, which is pretty instrumental in my life overall, not just some video games. But I'm going to play it today. I've already got a game file set up, LTI, for last teen impressions. Eh, see what I did there? Or late impressions. I mean, it goes either way. LTI, it works. You know, whatever. And there's a couple other files down there, but we're going to start off in the first level. So let's get to it. Take an early morning run over Moss Eisley with Wedge Antilles, but keep your eyes open for any suspicious activity. Ambush at Moss Eisley is the first level. And here we go. We can unlock other uh, vehicles as the game goes on, but not quite yet. For the first couple missions, we're just going to be using the X-Wing. So let's get right to it. Here's a hangar where we can see a whole bunch of different aircraft, and I guess I will show you, show it to you, just so you can see what there's going to be. And this guy's talking over me. I'm actually going to ignore that. The, we got the X-wing. We have the A-wing, and he's still talking. My gosh. Then we have the speeder. Okay, I'm going to mute him. <laughs> I can't focus. We've also got the speeder, and whenever a mission like this is involved. I love those missions. I don't really like the speeder all that much. It's not that great. But, <laughs> Star Wars fans know what this thing will primarily be used for, and that's why I love the speeder missions. We've got the Y-Wing, certainly not my favorite craft, because it's so freaking slow. It, the fire rate is abysmal. I mean, it's not a terrible craft. I'm glad that Star Wars has it, but, you know, Y-Wing. 
Here's a special craft. This one is my favorite, the V-Wing, and we're not going to see it until the very end of the game. But if you want to get a gold medal on everything, take the V-Wing when you're allowed to. It's super awesome. And I didn't really touch on it, but uh, there's also the A-Wing. Very fast, very nimble, agile, not very heavily firepowered, and the shields are... We don't talk about the shields. X-Wing is balanced overall, and we're going to take in the X-Wing for the first couple missions. They go fanfare, ta-da, and I won't subject this to you every time we start a mission. But you pick up your craft, yeah, <laughs> pick it up, then fly out, and if you look out into space, you can see where we're going to go. Which is a nice little touch that they threw in here. And just the part of the LP I'm dreading. I like the Star Wars crawl that they have, but it seems to be rather excessively overused and drawn out. But here we go, Chapter 1. Rebel Opposition. Yeah, we're going to have to go through this more than once. I'm not looking forward to it either, but, you know, you got what you got. Six months have passed since the Battle of Yavin. The Death Star has been destroyed, but the fight from Phenom is far from over. Oh, what a shock. As the war against the Empire rages across the vast of space, Luke Skywalker, it shouldn't that be all caps like in most Star Wars text? Anyway, forms a legendary rogue squadron from the Rebel Alliance's most skilled X-Wing pilots. Should I be talking over this? I don't know. I feel like I should be respecting the Star Wars scrawl by not saying anything and letting you read it, but... Eh. <laughs> it's too late now. Anyway, their mission to defend the struggling Rebel Alliance against the still powerful and battle-hardened Imperial foe in a last-ditch effort to control the galaxy. Yay for them. There's going to be a few episodes where we take on more than one mission. We could do two or three. There's going to be some missions where the level is so difficult that I will only include that one mission because I'm going to be so frustrated at that particular mission that I don't want to have to work on it anymore. Today we're going to be doing two missions. Next time we will do a third mission. Maybe a fourth. And I guess we'll play it by ear after that. You're going the wrong way! This mission is very simple. It's just like a basic training mission. Good morning, Wedge. The rest of Rogue Squadron is still back at base, but I thought we could take an early morning run through Beggar's Canyon. In X-Wings? Yeah, right. These are spaceship aircraft. They're not freaking skyhoppers. Which are crop dusters, basically, by the way. Luke, I think we've anyway, let's hurry it up here. I'm going to try to get a gold medal on every mission. I'll let my fighters kill that guy over there. Bam. I've actually linked all my lasers to fire off one big shot. I can also fire them all one after the other, but fire rate is very slow and not very accurate either, so I'm going to try to shoot them all just this way. This is the way I like to play. And there's going to be some instances where I'll show you the way that the game expects you to play and ways that I play, which is a little bit different. The way I play usually gets me a gold medal <laughs> if I do a good job and don't completely screw everything up. And one of my guys lost a probe droids. Okay. Somebody didn't take their raisin brand this morning. There we go. And one more on here. Now we're supposed to follow the wedge in the top right corner to our objective. Speaking of which, uh, little green dots on the radar are uh, friendlies, blue are civilian, red are enemies. If we come all the way out here in the middle of nowhere, and just to my right is where we started at, but... Oh, there you are. Hi right there. You can shoot at him, but it won't do you any good and you'll lose accuracy for it. Out here, there are a couple of these guys down here. I forget what they're called. Dubex, that's right. And some stormtroopers. And I... Darn it. Hey. I really want captions for what R2 was saying there. Come here, you stupid stormtrooper. There we go. I can't help but wonder, is that the uh, escape pod that R2 and C-3PO used in the first movie? I mean, there's a great dragon skeleton right there, but I don't know. Anyway, gonna blow that one up. Gonna blow this guy up. It is possible to fail this mission by doing nothing. The probe droids will eventually destroy enough civilian buildings that you'll lose the mission. And if you actually manage to pull that off, you are either not very good at video games, have a very hard time grasping basic controls, or you help them blow everything up. This will be the last probe droid. Boom. Boom. 
my understanding they're attacking Moss Eisley to draw me out of hiding? Because they know that this is Skywalker's home planet. I don't see the logic in that considering I left the planet. And this is a bunch of pirates. But, you know, whatever. We'll go along with it. Alright, no. I'm actually going to have to unlink my lasers for this because it, it can be very hard sometimes to shoot these things down. If you're familiar with the later uh, Rogue Squad... Oops! Sorry! <laughs> If you're familiar with the future Rogue Squadron games, you know that the fire rate in this game is very slow. Come here, come here. Link shot. Aha! Yeah, you don't fire very fast in this game, but it works. We did it, we saved Moss Eisley. Nice work, Rogue Squadron. We might make a name for ourselves after all. Good job, you saved a whole bunch of pirates and killers and smugglers. What? Anyway, we got a gold medal for that. Yay, awesome! I went through this entire game playing uh, practice rounds just to re-familiarize myself because I haven't played it in years, and I got a silver medal on this game. The uh, little dewbacks and stormtroopers that I veered off to kill, you actually need to kill them for a gold medal, and I missed one of the stormtroopers when I practiced. I figured we only needed 30 instead of 31 or 32. Whoops. <laughs> Rendezvous in Barkesh. Escort valuable rebel supplies through dangerous imperial territory over the humid lands of Barkesh. First level is a training mission. This game, they're going to introduce some more powerful enemies to us and a little bit of protection. I don't really like protection missions in any games, but hey, it was 90s uh, video games. You have to do a ton of escort missions. So we're going to do another escort mission. Oh, joy monies. Rogue Squadron, this is General Riken. One of our shuttles will rendezvous with a small convoy from local resistance on Barkesh, which must first travel through Imperial territory. They carry equipment and supplies vital to the Rebellion. Your mission is to rendezvous with that convoy and escort it to the landing zone. Good luck. This level can be a real pain if you're not familiar with it. Start off, let's kill some simple enemies. Oh, come on. I'm going to try to kill as many of these guys as possible. Now, there is a way that I like to do this mission, which will almost certainly get you a gold, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the scenic route. Over here we have the convoy. Hi, convoy. They'll start moving in a little while. For now, let's zoom ahead and see if we can clear out the way a little bit more. Get off a few probe droids. And just a little further ahead, if we take a right, is a first our first super strong enemy. Well, not super, but an ATSD. Supply vehicles have begun moving. Their escort will follow shortly. The smaller craft are the combat vehicles. Stick with the fly transport. That big one I shot was a torpedo. I've only got five of them in the bottom left corner. Now that they're on the move, they are going to be an easy target. Oh, great. And actually, this is something that very few people notice. If we fly back here far enough... There's a bomber that eventually comes in to destroy the old base. It isn't necessary to kill it. Come on. But you can save the base. I don't know if it counts toward your friendly saves or not. But eh, it's something to do if you've got a little bit of extra time. And here we go. Watch for enemy fighters. If there are any bombers in this game and you're doing a support convoy protection mission shoot take out the bombers first one of those bombs can destroy one piece of the convoy and that's it if you want to get a gold medal I think you have to save nearly all of them you might get one freebie oh. but for the most part yeah bombers are bad news for the bad news bears these are bad news bombers I don't think there's going to be any more bombers coming, so back this way and up, oh, turbo laser. These things will take six, six shots to kill, and I wasn't counting. If you roll your craft onto its side, you'll fly right between its lasers, which is totally funny. Okay, boom, another ATSC done. And a torpedo for you, sir. And another torpedo for you, sir. Oh, I'm not dead. I saw my teammate shooting him, I figured, eh, hey, maybe he'll die. Now, if accuracy is something that you're really having a problem with in getting the gold on this mission, come down here and start shooting the pyramids. 
pyramids are blue on your radar. They are civilian for some unknown reason. You can't destroy them. But, come on, come on, go boom, go boom. Okay, he didn't go boom. Maybe I was shooting the ground for most of that. Now go boom. Okay, okay, thank you. There's no enemies for a while in this huge area until we get way over there. But I'm going to stick around in this area for just a moment. Because in a little while, <laughs> we're going to get more bombers. And as long as we're waiting, we'll get a little bit more of an accuracy boost. Should be good for the rest of the mission now, unless I seriously miss a whole bunch of bombers. Oh, here they come. A little earlier than I was expecting. And because they're on a pre-flight pattern, after you get to the, if you watch the first one, you'll figure out where the second one's going to go. They'll be safe for a long time now, so let's fly on ahead to where they're going to go. They're eventually going to dock on the right side. Well, dock. They're going to meet up with the rendezvous point. That right, our other side there. I can't talk. Two of the combat vehicles came off in this direction, sort of to tell us that there is an Imperial garrison over here. We don't have to come over here, but if we want to get a lot more enemies killed, come on. Nope. <laughs> Got it. And they'll make a big fuss. There we go. Looks like there's only three left, and I'm pretty sure. I think it's safe to say, I hope, that the convoy isn't there yet for the next enemies to show up. So, kill off all the rest of the stormtroopers. And now we have killed pretty much in every enemy in the game but two. Well, every enemy in the level but two. If we killed off every enemy in the game this early, then it would be rather boring. And here come the last two enemies. Of course, they have to be freaking bombers. Or is it just one? I only see one on my radar. Is that it? Huh. It's weird that he didn't come in a pair. Bombers usually come in pairs. If not more than two. But that's it. We finish up the second mission. Now just don't destroy the craft on your own. That would be smart. A few more accuracy points, even though I'm sure I don't need it. And mission clear. We should get a gold now. The shuttle is clear. She'll pick up the rest of this cargo. The Rebel Alliance will appreciate those supplies, especially after we lost Yavin base. I'm making this look easy, but the controls are actually a little bit clunky. It's probably the 64-bit game. Also, the control stick on N64 controllers, none of them work the way they're supposed to. But we still got a gold. And we have been promoted to Ensign. Thank goodness for the promotions. They really mean nothing except to tell you how far you've come in your gold medal, even though you can't really see a chart. Anyway. That's actually going to be it for this episode. We took out the first two missions. They were both sort of tutorials. First one is pretty much, here's how you fly, figuring it out on your own. <laughs> yeah, no flying tutorials in this game. It seems really simple now, but later on it's going to get extremely stressful. This game will get very much harder. And <laughs> it's um, difficult later on. Very, very, very difficult. Like I said before, sort of, I went through this entire game on a practice run. I probably took an hour and a half to finish up one mission because I kept dying. It's very frustrating. That's how bad it is. The first level's pretty good, very simple, not much to worry about. And the gold medal uh, aiming achievements, they give the game a lot of replay value. I've gone through this game so many times, probably equally as much as Ocarina of Time. I can see the comparison now. And just uh, played it over and over because it's such a good game. It's a really good game. I say the controls are chunky, but actually they handle very nicely. But I'll cut it off here. Thanks for joining me for the episode, everybody. If you like what you've seen so far, click the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, you might want to consider doing so so you can see the future episodes where I will go completely bonkers and probably throw my controller against the wall, break this controller, and have to go pick up a new one from the other room. That hasn't already been broken. Everybody has broken N64 controllers. Come on. I'll come back next time, everybody. Next mission we do will be one of the first approaching hard missions, and I will see you then for a more difficult level. Take care.